supporting Russell. Yesterday, after the screening, some viewers came to me and told me, uh, tomorrow you will have to ask him what is the film about. Well, ask him. What is the film about? Well, I would like to answer that with a few ways answer, and I would ask you what you think. I'm not, I'm not here to think, I'm here to ask a question. <laughs> Come on. Okay, uh, I will answer by another question. <laughs> Look, with this film, it seems to me that more than ever, you are at the edge of animation. And uh, I have the strange feeling that the main character was the green screen. So, to me, it was a film about a green screen, a sort of tribute to the green screen. I, I guess that's, that's one of the things that you could read into it. I think a lot of my films are about making films. Uh, I think it's always interesting to see the medium as a, as a mirror, basically. You know? I also think that very often author films are self-portrait. But also the whole process, basically, of making films is part of it. And in this case, there is literally a reference to, to how I make films. You know, I was shooting at one point because I use live action a lot and use it in a green screen situation. And I had, I had this sort of flash of reality while we were shooting. I was standing on, on the soundstage in front of the green screen and there is all these weird people with masks, green masks, who do really strange things. And I suddenly realized, like, what a surreal ritual it actually is, you know, making a film like that. It was in a way very scary. You know, there was one character in front of the green screen being treated very badly because the director wanted that to happen. And there was all these other people around him that were all part of the same ritual. Everyone knew what they were doing, but as an outsider, which I sort of found myself in as a director, it looked like a weird ritual, almost like a weird sort of um, uh, execution. And, and that sort of seeped into the work itself, which is always interesting, you know, if reality influences art, when uh, uh, reality was already influenced by the art itself. So that's what I'm very interested in. So I let that happen in, in this film. Who are the records? The records is my music project, basically. It's, it originally was a band. It was me and three other guys. And the band was called The Records. The The Records at one point uh, got older. They got Yoko's and Linda's. They got famous and Mares. And the, the, the band magic was gone. But still, I had all this music uh, that I wanted to use. Um, so I decided to turn it into a project. And the band became something bigger than uh, simple mortals, and the records became the records, not the records, the records. So it's still a project, we're still recording all the music, and I decided to make it my Fantasia. You know, like Disney uses classical music to show the audience what the music looks like, I use rock and roll music, and I call it my Fantasia, the records. Okay, so do, do you consider uh, a film like Lonely Bones as a music video? I mean, is this a support for the music or? No, is no music no? videos are basically commercials to sell records yeah. or to sell artists or whatever. In this case, the film sells itself. You know, it, it's weird that people, as soon as you use rock and roll instead of classical or jazz, which is perfectly accepted in the, in the film world as a sort of artistic way of uh, artistic motivation to make a film. As soon as you use rock and roll, people think it's music video. It is because I'm not selling anything, I'm just using the music. You know, it would be pretentious if I were using classical music or something, because I didn't grow up with classical music. And classical music is not as meaningful to me as rock and roll. Rock and roll is my way of self-expression. And my music films are basically ways to introduce you into my yeah, intuitive world. Your films always take several viewings for me to get all the things that are in them because there's so many little in-joke details. My impression upon the first watching of this that it was your funny, and I found the film very funny, take on Christianity and the resurrection. 
<laughs> well, I think that says more about you than it actually says about me. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think with films like this, there is no right and wrong interpretation. You know? it, it, it's very interesting to actually have a dialogue with the audience. I think it's very, uh, for me, it's uninteresting if, if cinema is a monologue. If I tell you a story, you just sit down, you listen, and when I'm done, you can go to sleep. You know, I find that relatively boring. I think the dialogue between an audience and, and, and an artist is more interesting. So I. I also think art is more about asking questions than giving answers. So, and, and this is especially where festivals are. You, know, you meet all these people, people tell you what they saw in the film, and that's, that's a very interesting thing. You know, it's not, it's this interactive thing. It's not uh, uh, a death thing, you know, like a story and then it's all over. I think it starts at the screen, you know, when audience and, and artists exchange. Uh, personal uh, interpretation, personal experience. Thank you very much, Rostov.